All right, we'll now have a look at the changes of state. Um, and we will um, uh, once again try to establish the, just the qualitative description of what's going on when a solid becomes a liquid and when a liquid becomes a gas and the reverse processes. So our objectives are to describe and explain the process of phase changes in terms of molecular behavior, to do explain in terms of molecular behavior why temperature does not change during a phase change, and to distinguish between evaporation and boiling. And to do this, we'll return to the simulation and just have a look at the changes that take place as we add heat to um, change the state of a substance. The first change of state that we're going to have a look at is melting. Melting is the change of state um, from a solid to a liquid. It's sometimes also called fusion. Okay, so when we add heat to a solid, the particles begin to vibrate more violently. Eventually, we get this qualitative change in the behavior of the system, which we can see here. In fact, I might have just heated it up a little bit too much. Let's just cool it down a tad. Okay, so here we can see that we have mostly a liquid. In fact, I'll just cool it down a bit more. So here we can see a liquid. Now, macroscopically, what's changed is that when the solid reached a particular temperature, it lost its fixed shape and it became fluid. And to make this happen, we had to add heat. So we had to add energy um, to the substance. Um, now, it's interesting to note, and, and this simulation doesn't show it very clearly, but we'll show this in experiment in class, uh, that while the melting is taking place, there's no change in the temperature. And this means that there's no change in the random kinetic energy of the particles making up the substance. And so, um, as we're adding heat here, the, the kinetic energy on average of the particles doesn't increase during the melting process. Um, so what is happening? What, what's happening to all this energy that we're adding during the melting process? Well, what that energy is doing is it's breaking we can say that it's breaking the strong bonds between the between the particles within the solid. Um, a, a, probably a better way of saying this is that the energy that we're adding is going to doing work against the strong forces that are holding the particles together. So the energy that we're adding is pulling the particles apart a little bit, um, which means that they uh, the attractive forces between them become weaker because they're now further apart. Uh, they end up having more potential energy because we had to do work to pull them apart. Um, and so the, the energy that we've added to the system has gone to increasing the potential energy of the individual particles. And um, so that's why there's no increase in temperature because the random kinetic energy has not increased, but the potential energy increases during the melting process. Okay, um, uh, th another point to make is that um, wh once we have um, melted the, s the substance, uh, if we add more heat, once it's all melted, once we have no solid left, if we add heat, the temperature will continue to increase in this new liquid phase, which has a different specific heat capacity to the, to the solid state. Okay, so that's, that's the, those are the main points about melting. The, the key point is to recognize that the temperature doesn't change, and the reason that the temperature doesn't change as we add heat is that the heat that we add goes to increasing the potential energy of the individual particles. Okay, now we're going to have a look at the, the process by which a liquid changes state to a gas. And um, this process is called vaporization. And there are two um, different ways um, by which a liquid can turn into a gas. Um, and both 
are familiar because we're so familiar with these processes for water. Um, they're called evaporation and boiling. Now, um, evaporation um, can happen at any temperature, like, and you you probably experienced this if you if you um, get up in the morning and you're walking to school and you pass a puddle on the road uh, because it's rained the night before. You might notice when you're walking home after the day, a long sunny day at school, that the puddle is no longer there. It's evaporated, and um, so so the liquid that was on the ground has turned into uh, water in its gaseous state uh, in the air surrounding where the puddle was. Um, so that's the process of evaporation, and the reason why this happens is that in a liquid the particles are free to move so what tends to happen is that the particles with the greatest kinetic energy they bounce around until they make their way to the surface of the liquid and so at the surface of the liquid we have the highest kinetic energy particles of the liquid and what can occasionally happen is that a um, one of these high kinetic energy particles has enough kinetic energy to escape the attractive forces of the liquid um, and let's just find one where it's going to happen. And it happens quite slowly at low temperatures. So here's one that managed to escape the attractive forces of the liquid. Um, and that means that it's, it turns into a gas. So in here we have the whole thing sitting in a, in a container. In the, the example of the puddle on the street, the wind would blow these particles away and um, we'd get continued uh, evaporation until we no longer had any liquid, until it was all gas. Um, the process happens more quickly if we add a little bit of heat. So we still have a liquid form here, but the particles now have more kinetic energy on average, so the particles near the outside has, have much more kinetic energy, so we're getting quite a lot of evaporation taking place. So um, evaporation, to sum up, can hap happen at any temperature, um, and uh, it's, a, it's a result of the particles with the highest kinetic energy making their way to the surface of the liquid and then being able to escape the attractive forces that's um, within the liquid. Um, and so evaporation only happens at the surface of a liquid as well. Okay, the other, the other way that a liquid can become a gas is through the process of boiling. Uh, macroscopically, this process is familiar. As, for example, when we boil a kettle to make a cup of tea, we heat the water up until it reaches 100 degrees, at which point the, um, the water uh, very quickly turns to um, water in its gaseous form. Uh, so the liquid water turns into water in, in the gaseous form. And uh, while this is happening, um, the temperature remains constant. So let's let's boil away all this neon. So now you can see that within the what what used to be the liquid, all the particles have sufficient kinetic energy to break free, and it happens throughout the liquid during the boiling process. Um, so microscopically, what's happening when the boiling point is reached? is that the particles within the liquid have enough kinetic energy to break free of the attractive forces that were holding them together. Um, so the vaporization takes place all through the liquid, as opposed to um, evaporation, which only occurred at the surface. And the heat that we're adding actually goes to increasing the potential energy of the particles. So we're moving the particles further apart. Uh, we're doing work against these attractive forces. Uh, and therefore, the particles are gaining kinetic and en sorry potential energy, um, and um, so any heat that we add during the boiling process increases the potential energy, but not the random kinetic energy of the particles, and so the temperature remains constant, and therefore we call this heat that we're adding during the boiling process we call it latent heat, because it's not actually adding to the it's not actually increasing the temperature, which is the measurable quantity. 
it's increasing the potential energy of the particles. So those are the two um, processes of vaporization and we'll just go over how we distinguish clearly between the two processes in, in a, a quick explanation to come. As we remove heat from the gas, um, the, the reverse processes can be observed. So as we reduce the, as, as we remove heat from the gas, we can see that um, eventually we reach uh, a temperature where the gas turns back into a liquid the potential energy once again decreases and um, the, the particles are once again bound together as a liquid. If we continue to remove heat, we can see that the liquid becomes a solid again. And those two processes, the process of going from a gas to a liquid, uh, that's called condensation. And the process of going from a liquid to a solid is called freezing or solidification and um, they really are reverse the reverse of the two processes in all senses they um, we're, we're removing heat and during the process of condensation um, the particles lose potential energy and during the process of freezing or solidification the particles are losing potential energy as they become more tightly bound. Um, so basically the explanation is the same. The process is just reverse. All right, so now let's go back to um, what's actually happening as we add heat. So we'll start with a solid, a solid water actually at, at negative 50 degrees here in this graph. And we have one kilogram of this solid water. As we add heat to the water, we can see that the um, temperature, sorry, to the ice, we can see that the temperature of the ice increases at a steady rate. So if we add heat at a steady rate, the temperature of the ice increases at, as a, at a steady rate. As you would expect from the equation, Q is equal to mc delta t, where both m and c are constants in this case. And um, so the heat is directly proportional to the change in temperature. Um, we then have this strange thing happening at zero degrees where we add heat but we get no increase in the temperature. And what's going on here is that the um, the ice is melting. It's changing from the solid state to the liquid state and um, the heat that we're adding goes to increasing the potential energy of the particles rather than increasing the random kinetic energy of the particles. So during the melting um, stage here, um, we see no change in temperature because the energy we're adding is going to changing the state of the substance, to adding potential energy to the particles within the substance. Once we've changed the whole sample that we have, so the whole kilogram has been changed during this stage B here into a liquid. So once the whole, the whole thing is liquid, as we continue to add heat, the temperature continues to increase again. So now we have the temperature of the liquid water. We're adding heat to it, and the temperature is steadily increasing. You can see that the rate at which it's increasing is different to that of ice, and that's because liquid water has a different specific heat capacity to that of ice. So as we increase the temperature of the water, as we add heat, the temperature of the water increases until once again it, it plateaus here. And that happens when we reach 100 degrees, which is the boiling point of water. So once we reach the boiling point of water, again, the heat that we're adding during this stage D in this heating process um, is going to increasing not the random kinetic energy of the particles, but once again, the potential energy is, um, is increasing during this stage. So we're moving the particles much further apart. They're becoming a gas, uh, and therefore their potential energy is dramatically increasing. Once we've turned the whole sample into a gas, um, and if we continue to add heat to this, um, this water, the, the gas will, will uh, increase in temperature. 
uh, indefinitely. So if we continue adding heat to the gas, it will continue to increase in temperature. So, um, so these um, he heating curves and cooling curves of various substances um, show us um, uh, how much hidden or latent heat there is in the processes of fusion and vaporization for the substance. The gradients of these sections here are actually um, tell us about the um, uh, specific heat capacity. The gradient here is actually the inverse of the specific heat capacity. Um, and so, uh, and and what what's going on at B and D? Um, being able to explain that that is um, where we're adding heat to increase the potential energy of the particles um, is key to explaining the second of our objectives in this session.